you know, we, uh, you know, we just got out of revival, amen, and uh, we all got the real definition of that meaning, the real definition of, of revival, it's ongoing, amen, it's ongoing, amen, and uh, it's a process. And that's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. Because in that process, you're going to see a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to encounter yeah. a lot of action. Some good, some bad. But no one understands it's for your admonition. And then it's for your. It's for you to grow, if I can use that for lack of a better word. It's, it's, it's to help you grow. It's to help us to grow. And for us to understand and know where we stand with our Lord and Savior. Amen. And how to get closer. But right now, I want to talk about the battle. You see, as the announcer said, the ringmaster, a man, when you're going to the boxing, you know, arena. In this corner, a man, you have the man of sin. It's called the devil, Satan, flesh, a man, you name it, in that corner. And in this corner is you. Now, we know and understand that a lot of times our worst enemy is going to be ourselves. Amen? Amen. But God knows and he understands where we stand. Because you know that there's no good thing that the weather than his flesh. Now you on this side and that flesh is on the other side. That's and in, and the flesh is caught him with all that sin and lust and degradation and despair. Amen. And his corner is Satan. The devil, whatever you want to call him, he's in the corner with that flesh. In this corner. With you and your God. I don't think you heard me. In this corner, against that flesh, that sin, amen, all the things that's coming with you and the devil against you, on this side is you and your God. He's standing with you. And then the ring announcer in the middle, as he makes his announcements, he says these words. Let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> because it's going to be a fight. Huh? 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 It's going to be a fight! <laughs> but, saints of God, you, can you, I want you to feel what I'm feeling. If you can see what I'm seeing and feel what I feel. If God be for you, mm -hmm. <laughs> that he's more than all the world against you. Amen. So, when we get ready to rumble, you know, we're ready to fight, but you know, your God already told you, you have no need to fight in this battle. But now you've got to courage yourself, now you've got to be ready. <coughs> don't think you don't have to do nothing. You're going to have to do something. Now he told us what to put on. Amen. Huh? Amen. Didn't he tell us what to put on? Amen. Put on your weight. You got to gird your weight for truth. See, this is what you have to do to get ready to fight. What do you have to do to get ready to fight? When you get up out of that bed, you tell the truth. Yes. 
If you know you're not standing right, Lord, I ain't standing right. Amen. Help me. Amen. You have things that you need to put on. The helmet of salvation. Protect your mind. See, you're fighting a spiritual battle. We fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against spiritual wickedness, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. So when we get ready to rumble, we're actually going into prayer. Amen. That's what we do. Amen. Because God is going to take care of everything else. He's going to move in that spirit realm, and he's going to come outside of that spirit realm into the physical realm, and he's going to take care of all your problems outside. Yes. Amen. So let's get ready to rumble. This is what happens when you go into revival. Now you know where you're standing. And then it's time to start climbing that mountain. Amen. Because it's a mountain. Amen. Amen. It's a mountain. But you see where you need to go. See, that's the beauty of it. You know where you're going. You know what you need to do to get there. Amen. It's going to be rough. And you didn't say it was going to be easy. But you can do it. Why? Lord... Where do I get the strength from? You get the strength from me. God said, I'm inside of you. I'm, I'm right there with you. Jesus said, I'm right there with you. Amen. Amen. Turn your Bibles with me to 2 Kings chapter 6. I'm just going to read a little bit. Amen. And another young man that, that ran into some problems. Amen. And we're getting read at verse 8. Chapter 6, 2 Kings, chapter 6, verse 8. And it says this. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such in such a place shall I shall be my camp. And the men and the man of God sent unto, unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of, and saved himself there, not once nor twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was sore, was sore troubled for the for this thing, and he called and he called his servants and said unto them, Will ye not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? Which of us is for the king of Israel? And he don't call all his company. He know he set up a trap for the, for the king of Israel and his, and his army. But for some reason, they bypassed that trap. And he's trying to figure out, how did they get past my wisdom? And he called his servants together and said, who told him? Which one of y'all went and warned the king of, of Israel? Verse 12. And one of the servants said, None, my Lord, O King, but Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel. He telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. <laughs> Come on with you. Hey. What? This man is what? Yeah, he, he's, he's a prophet down now, O King. He hear what you're speaking in, in the privacy of your own home. And he said, go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, behold, he is in Thor. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host and and they came by night and compassed the city about 
And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, an host come past the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, unto Elias, Elias, Alas, my master, how shall we do? We can pass by all these people. What are we going to do? And the man of God answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Now the young man, all he seen was horses and chariots. All he seen was the horses and chariots. Amen. That was from the king of Syria. But the man of God could see just a little bit further than the flesh. He could see into the spirit. Amen. Amen. And he told, he told the young man, don't worry, though, that be for us more than they that are against us. <clears throat> And verse 17, and Elias, Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots, fire round about Elisha. Now the young man, when God opened his eyes, he looked and he saw in the hills and in the mountains was about 20, 30, 40, 100 times more than the people that he first saw. And I could see the young man being excited. He was excited. You know, you get that confidence when you know you got reinforcement. Amen. But when you got backup. Yes, well, saints of God, I want you to be encouraged. Yeah. And get excited yeah. because you got enforcement, you got backup, you have someone that's ready to fight for you at your word. Just ask him, just tell him, and he's right there to fulfill. He's right there to fulfill. So we ready to rumble. Just know that when you get ready, just know that your God is ready to fight for you. If you do what you are supposed to do, he's telling us how to prepare ourselves. Amen. And we have to get on our knees. I mean, come on, we know what we're supposed to do. Everybody, just about everybody in here has testified about that revival. You know what you need to do. The Lord is telling me to go a little bit further. Y'all remember? Y'all remember what y'all was saying? Remember the testimonies that we're going for? God wants to go a little bit further. I, you know, I felt like I wasn't supposed to stop right here. I was supposed to keep going. These were all the testimonies that we're going for. But y'all don't let you right. Keep pushing forward. You know what you need to do. If you keep going in that direction, keep going in that direction, you're going to grow. Amen. You're going to be blessed. Amen. All your troubles and sorrows, you'll see them bypassing because the Lord is fighting for you. He's fighting for you. You don't have to be scared. Satan is slick. He's slick. So when you get ready to rumble, you don't have to be scared. You know, you remember back in the day when that bully came up. You know when you used to be scared of that bully. When you see that bully, you start shaking. When you see him a fog, cause you know they're coming. Oh Lord, I don't feel like bothering with this cat. I don't feel like going. So you get nervous, you're scared. Y'all remember that? You know, I don't know if you've ever been bullied before, but. You see that bullet coming down the road, you get nervous and scared. You know, you don't know what to do. You're trying to think out how you're going to get away from it. You're trying to think, out, think about what you're going to say to him. Because you don't want to pick it up. You don't want her bargain with you, amen? <laughs> you got somebody to fight for you. Let me just tell you about this little dream that I had a while back. So I was in a spiritual battle in a dream. And the devil that I saw, was he was huge. He was real black, and he had muscles like no other. And I know some people in here have seen that same demon. Uh, I know some people have seen that same demon. And he was big, and he was strong, and he had muscle. And so I was scared. 
But I said, I'm going to stand and I'm going to fight him. And I was, he was reaping havoc in the dream. He was just tearing up. And I stood up against him. I told him to say, the Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. You know, and I'm trying to, you know, rebuke the devil. He turned around and he looked at me. You know, I know a lot of people can battle with this. He turned around and he looked at me and said, what makes you think you have the strength to rebuke me? He said, you got so much sin in your life. You, you don't have a right to rebuke me. Who are you to stand against me? And he stood like that and he was standing strong and my knees were just shaking. Oh, well, you should have seen me in the dream. My knees were bucking. I was looking at that day. I was just going down and down, right? And then I heard a small, still voice standing next to me. He said, baby, it's not about you. He said, it is about my word. If you stand on my word, stand on my word, stand on my word, it ain't about you. You see, you understand and know that God knows that we have issues that we're going to have to deal with in this fight. We got sin down that we're going to have to fight in this flesh. But as long as you're fighting, you stand on his word. Your so God is not going to throw you in the, in the garbage can because you're having issues. But in your heart, you love God and you're fighting with everything inside of you. You just keep fighting. You see, after you've done everything you know to do to stand. After you've done everything that you know to do to stand. After you've done everything you know to do to stand. You keep standing. And don't you fall, don't you waver, don't back down. Because it is not about you. It is about the word of God because he's coming to fight for you. He's fighting for you. And if you stand on that word, if you stand on that word, you'll get strength. You'll get strength. And you will see the salvation of the Lord. Oh, man, in that dream, when that boy spoke that in my ear, and then when he spoke that in my ear, all the scriptures came flooding through my mind. When Jesus was standing, amen, in the wilderness, hungry and tired from fasting, how the devil approached him, and Jesus said, it is written. That is the word. There you go, son. Hold on to that word. It is written. And Jesus said, it is written. Everything he does. He's done for us to learn from. He's God Almighty in the flesh. He didn't have to do that. But he did it for a reason. To show us that we can survive. We can make it. We don't have to give in. Because you got issues in your body. Because you got issues in your flesh. Amen. Because you're fighting sin battles. You just keep fighting. The word of God tells us to mortify, daily modify the deeds of this flesh. He said you have to daily modify the deeds of this flesh. You have to daily modify the deeds of this flesh. You're going to have problems. You're going to have issues. But you stand on his word and know that you can make it. Know that you can overcome. Because Jesus had already overcome. You see, the voice that spoke in my ear, it was so confident. When he spoke in my ear, it was he was confident. You know, I've seen somebody say, hey, 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 I see you worried. Don't worry about it. You know, I don't worry about it. I got it. And you, you look and you say, how are we going to get through this? Don't worry about it. I got it. I got you. I got you. I got you. You got that. You say, man, you know something. What you know? What you know? Don't worry about it. I got you. I'm, I'm looking. I got you. You just come behind me. I got a way out. And you say, oh, shoot, man, let me get behind this guy. He know what he's doing. Amen. That's the way that voice said. That voice said, it's not about you. It's about my word. It was confident. Oh, man, my knees got strong. I said, that's right, God, that's right. And I told that devil, you're a liar. And I started fighting that devil with everything inside of me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Boy, my knees got strong. I stood tall. And I got bold. Some strength about myself because I know that the word was true. 
I know that God was coming forth to save me and he gave me what I need to overcome. And you can also have what you need to overcome because you already have it. Just use it. You have to use it. Use it. Amen. You've been filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name. You've got the Spirit of Christ inside of you. Use it and let it take control. You stand up and you tell that devil, let's get ready to rumble. Let's get ready to rumble. Let's get ready to rumble. I'm ready to get dirty. Let's do this. What you want? How you want to do this? <laughs> let's do this. You see, because my Bible told me that one could put a flight a thousand, two can put the flight, how many y'all know the word? No. Ten thousand? Two can put the flight ten thousand. What you want? What you want? Say what you want. What you got? Come on with it. Come on with it. I'm ready to rumble, you ready to rumble. Stripping your feeble knees. And you stand strong with confidence. Because God has got you. He's coming. And he knows exactly what you need. You see? He knows exactly what you need. The devil and his enemy was plotting against the children of Israel. And God done already spoke their plans. The man of God just said, hey, don't, don't go down through there because Satan is setting up a, a plot for you. There's more for you than against you. There's more for you than against you. Satan is not stronger than God. He don't have, he don't have more soldiers than God. <laughs> he don't, he don't, he don't, he don't. He cannot defeat your God. He's already been defeated. He's already defeated. And he knows this. But sometimes we don't. Sometimes we get discouraged because we feel like that we've done so terribly that God is going to just, he, God is not going to fight for us. But I beg to differ. Change your thought. That's the devil talking in your mind. Because I read a scripture that says this, my little children, it says, my little children, I write to you this message that you sin not. But now if any man sin, he has an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. That word advocate means a lawyer, somebody that will fight for there with you. He's right there with you. Just like you know how we are parents and you got that little baby that's just learning how to walk. <laughs> and then that baby walk, you standing right there with that baby. Make sure you don't you're going to let them walk now, but you're going to let them stumble. But you're going to watch it. Make sure they don't fall too hard. That's what God does with us. Amen. And he's going to make sure that we get every opportunity to make it into the kingdom of heaven. Yes. Every opportunity. To make it into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. We are his children. We are his children. As long as you are fighting. As long as you are letting the Holy Ghost lead you. You are his child. And who? What parent having a child? If that child asks them for something. Yes. A fish. Then he'll give them a positive serpent. Yes. What parent will do that to his child that love him? If they ask for a piece of bread. He's going to give them a rock. Which parent is going to do that for their child? Deliberately hurt that child is not going to do it. And the word of God says, you being evil, That's right. you being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much the Father which is in heaven. Come on. Amen. Come on. He's not going to throw you in the trash can because you made a mistake. See, because see, he already see from from your mother womb. He knew you from the foundations of the world. From the foundations of the world, he called you. You know, on them six days, 
and he was working on the earth and everything else, you was in that mix. Huh? And from your mother's womb, he called your name. He knew your name before you came out of your mother's womb. He already knew who you are. Everything that you would face, every problem that you would have, every sin battle you would encounter, he already knew it. He's not going to throw you away if he was going to do it. He'd have done it a long time ago. Amen. So let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise just for that. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So we're going to strengthen out, we're going to strengthen our people needs. Amen. We're going to guard up our lungs. We're going to put on our armor. Amen. And we're going to get ready to rumble. We're going to get ready to rumble. Let's give it all the hands up and pray. And let's get ready to go to battle with that devil. He ain't got no power over us. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and pray. Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Who on the armor of Christ? Who on the armor of Christ? I put on the armor of Jesus. Get ready to fight, fight, fight. I put on the armor of Christ. Put on the armor of Christ. Put on the armor of Jesus. Get ready to fight, fight, fight. Say, guard your ways to mouth with truth, and don't let the devil tell you it's too much.